Oh, so the fact that the, that the text could say that it could be a guarantee shows us that it cannot be a promise dependent on you and I. Because yeah. we do everything but guarantee. Welcome back to The Move, where we are vibing in and with the book 10 minutes at a time. Today we, uh, or actually I say last episode, yes. I said we would be starting chapter five yes. after covering a, se a series of passages that you initially didn't want to cover. After we turned off the microphones from yesterday's episode, we're like, bro, we actually got to do a part two. And that is, again, man, that is a slanderous truth. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? A slanderous truth. Okay, so here's the reason why we actually want to go back to the passage. We'll dive in. We'll start the timer just a second. Yeah. Give us a, uh, a, a, a moment to set the context. We looked at the passage and started talking about Abraham. And we went on this long tangent on Abraham, which I think was really good. Mm -hmm. I learned something from that. Yeah, because one thing that we took away is that although you have faith, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have growth. Right. It could be immature and it can go unto maturity. And another thing is that in faith, disbelief does not equal unbelief. Correct. Right? There's a difference between There's those. a difference between disbelief if, and unbelief. If you missed that, go back to the previous episode. Yeah. It'll make more sense, yeah. I hope. Um, but the problem is that we actually never came from Abraham's story back to Paul's. Paul. And that's kind of important because yeah. chapter 5 starts off with therefore. And anytime therefore is in a passage, you got to ask, what's it there for? <laughs> but um, That's so corny. That's what every pastor says. Yeah. But it's true. And since we didn't return back to the passage, it's not going to make sense when we try to go to chapter 5. Yeah. So with that so said, it. read it again, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, we, we asked you the question, did you read it? And hopefully yeah. you read it last time. But read it one more time. We'll wait we'll, for you here. We'll be, we'll be right here. Yeah. We'll start our 10 minutes. All right. With that said, we got 10 minutes on the clock. Three, two, one. Okay. So what strikes me is that Paul's argumentation is the, again, if we go back and frame it like we were framing it in the previous 20 episodes, that you have Paul making this argument to both Jews and Gentiles, but particularly to Jews, that he's now in the service of God and he has this ministry. And this ministry is the revelation of Jesus Christ and it's apart from law. And this is why then he says in verse 16 that it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring. Now, who's the offspring? The offspring are those who believe in the same fashion that Abraham believed. Yeah. And, and even beyond that, like the fact that it says that it's guaranteed shows us that it cannot be dependent upon the mm. works of the law or the person in question. Because the reality is, can you or I ever guarantee our faithfulness as far as outside works to anyone, let alone God himself, whose standard is much higher? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. So the fact that the, that the text could say that it could be a guarantee shows us that it cannot be a promise dependent on you and I. Because yeah. we do everything but guarantee our life. Yeah, and so you have this, the guarantee is resting on the revelation of Jesus Christ. And you can be a law keeper, right? I mean, you have here not only to the adherents of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So the law keeper, the, the, the Israelite, the Jew that has circumcision and that is performing all of the rites and rituals that are required based on the instructions of the Torah, they still need faith because that's yeah. where the promise is coming through, a guarantee outside of our bodies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, right. Yep. And so what I really what really speaks to me is that then you have this righteousness that is accounted to us based on a righteousness that has been revealed in Jesus. And as we put our hope, our belief in him, then we are he concludes with this, that we are raised. We're counted righteous, but we receive justification. But before I get there, I want to frame, you know, how I feel about framing. This line, hoping against hope. Again, the last time we spoke, we talked about it being expecting contrary to the expectation, right? Mm -hmm. So that then this example of me driving 100 miles an hour in a 70, cop stops me. What should I expect? You should expect 
to get a big fine. You know, usually, <laughs> usually you drop thirty over. I think they take the car and pound it. You get arrested. Is that for real? I, mean, I, I heard. I, I heard that somewhere. Well, here's the thing. I did get a speeding ticket once, and I was going like. So here's the thing. I, I was coming back from a ministry retreat of uh-huh. all things, yeah. and I was having this conversation with my my co-pilot or whatever shotgun. Yeah. And we were just like caught up. And it, honestly, it was a great conversation. It was a spirit conversation. Yeah, it was yeah. like one of these where you yeah. just like lose complete context of everything. Yeah. And I'm going down the road and all of a sudden there's lights in the back of my rearview mirror. And when yeah. a cop finally tells me what was going on, like I come to realize I was going 95 miles an hour in a, in a 70. Oh, wow. I straight up passed the cop. Oh, wow. Not even aware because I was so, so focused, focused on what was in. going on. Wow. <laughs> Thankfully, they didn't tow. <laughs> okay, good, good. Well, here you go. Expecting against expectation, right? I still so, got the ticket, though. That's yeah, well, 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 you got what you deserved. <laughs> so what happens is that I'm expecting to get a big fine, a ticket, or having my car, whatever. But when the cop shows up and he gives me a hundred dollars instead of a ticket, mm-hmm. that's grace, yeah. right? This this idea of unmerited favor, yeah, right. Yeah. But then that in the receiving of that grace, that I somehow had this knowledge that this is what I get when I actually believe in the goodness of the cop over and against his sense of punishing me, yeah, right. Yeah. And it's almost dependent on how I believe that mm-hmm. I, I receive. And so that as this happens, say it happens a couple of times and the cop is nice to me every single time, all of a sudden him doing that begins to transform me. Yes. So that I'm like, man, I, I don't want to jeopardize my standing. I don't want to jeopardize other people's lives. I see this guy being so nice to me. It awakens well, something within me. even beyond that, me. it's like, dude, this guy's been really nice to me. Like, I don't want to just like keep on making his life difficult. Yes, and this harkens back to Paul's argument at the beginning in Romans 1 and Romans 2, where he says, listen, there is a consciousness, there is an awareness of the rightness and the wrongness of things in the world apart from just the codification of the law. The Gentile has this. And when you have this police officer who's treating you with such amazing kindness over and over again, it awakens something within so that you then respond in kind. Yeah. And that this belief, that trusting, that the goodness of the police officer coming up to the car is already guaranteed. And that goodness is what motivates you to live a life in keeping with the goodness that the police officer has demonstrated. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah. So that then Paul concludes here, he says, Verse 23, but the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, right? But for ours also. But for ours also, it will be counted to us that we can expect to receive the unexpected grace. It will be counted to us. Why? To those who believe in him who was raised from the dead, Jesus our Lord. Then here's the, here's, here it is. Who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Hmm. So this is Paul, again, making this argument that that which should have been our wages, yeah, we should have gotten the ticket yeah, going over 100. That which should have been our wage. Jesus Christ came in the flesh, right, assumes and consumes sin in his body, receives the, 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 the curse, becomes the curse, right, emerges from the grave victorious and says, here, I now offer you that which I have attained, yeah. which is this immortal resurrected life and a power to live according to the goodness and destiny I created you to. And when I'm sitting in that driver's seat and the cop is just lavishing this goodness upon me because of the consciousness within it penetrates in such a way that I now, man, I'm doing 69. <laughs> and now I'm doing 69 because I love you, you've loved me, and I love people around me. And, man, you've been good. I appreciate that. I'm going to live this life. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah. That's That That to me is just, he he resurrected for our justification, man. And, it's, and this is an agreement, again, Romans 2, 4, I think it is. It is the kindness of God. That goes to repentance. That leads men to repentance. Yeah. And so we expect against expectation mm-hmm. because he's good. Back to the faith thing. It's not what I do. It's what he's promised. That's right. That's, that's exactly why the text says that it's counted to him. 
Mm. I mean, if you think about the reason why you would use that language is because that, that person that whatever the thing is being counted to, that person has a deficit. Uh -huh. That's the only reason why you should ever count something as if it weren't there. Uh -huh. the, if you had it, I wouldn't have to count it to you. I would just say, oh, it's there. Oh, that's good. That's good. I, I, like, count it is almost like it's, it's – I get this, like, this the imagery of like we're all kind of pretending that it's actually happening. We're counting it as if it occurred even though it didn't really occur. Yeah, yeah. The reason why we get we, we get God's favor counted towards us or why we get this righteousness that's counted to us is because inherently we don't meet that standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so God then has to transfer that. That's why we have to be justified. God's able to transfer that which Jesus did and count it towards us. Yeah, and what's amazing is that this idea of justification, right? Justification, the old Billy Graham idea of <laughs> just, just if as I. I. <laughs> just as if I never, never sinned. sinned. But that God presents us with no obstacle between he and us, yeah, right? So that God looks at us and he's pleased with us and he presents us into his courts and says, you're my beloved. Mm -hmm. That's justification. We stand right before our God. We have peace with him. But the reason we have peace is because our faults, our trespasses, our actually working contrary to his kingdom mm -hmm. is not counted against us. Mm -hmm. And quite the opposite, he actually gives us Jesus Christ to demonstrate to us not only the end of what sin truly is, mm -hmm. but how far he's willing to go to have us stand before him in righteousness. So I can think about it this way. I get pulled over doing 100, and the cop is sitting in his car, and he's waiting. And I've been told the story that if you get pulled over, instead of turning on the lights and getting out the license, what you have to do is stick your hand out and give him a thumbs up. Right? You're like, that's stupid. Who would ever do that? I mean, I've just been stopped doing 100. But it happens. I get stopped. I'm there. Put my hand out. Give him a thumbs up. And he sees that thumbs up, and he knows that I believe in his goodness. Counts it to me. Comes to my window. $100. Just grace. That's 10 minutes. Ending on that note, I'm sure people have some questions. Because that sounds a little bit like cheap grace. But that's not what we're necessarily referring to ultimately maybe we'll get into that in the next section maybe not if not let us know what you think in the yeah. comments below all right. get angry at jonathan it's all right angry <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you.